Good evening, Room 207 students. Here I am. I'm going to read you Chapter 45. And I actually just read you Chapter 46 and realized my mistake. So good thing I didn't publish it and send it out like I did last time. I was thinking it didn't make sense. And uh, I'll tell you again, I'm having some issues with my computer. So hopefully I'll be able to record this. And um, yeah, so let's get started with Chapter 45. And we have been inferring, and we're going to continue to infer. And when you make an inference or infer, you think about what the author wants you to know but doesn't tell you in the text. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and do that and model it for you. And for this next two chapters, tonight and tomorrow, 45, 46, I want you to um, be doing inferences. So we left off where um, Jackson met Mary Saul. And they were walking the dogs, and he breaks down and just tells her everything. And um, Marisol, as his best friend, tells her everything that's going on and that they're going to have to move. And uh, now we're at chapter 45. Okay, so here we go. I waited for her to tell me I was nuts. Look, Marisol knelt down to scratch beans behind the ear. We don't know everything. I don't know why my brothers feel the need to burp the alphabet. I don't know why I like to build things. I don't know why there are no rainbow M&Ms. Why do you have to understand everything, Jackson? I like not knowing everything. It makes things more interesting. Silence is about the facts. Life is about facts. Crenshaw is not a fact, I shrugged. If you understand how something happens, then you can make it happen again or not happen. You want Crenshaw to go away? Yes, I said loudly. Then more softly, no, I don't know. She smiled. I wish I could see him. Black, white, hairy, I said, extremely tall. What's he doing right now? One-handed push-ups. You're kidding me. I'd love to see that. I groaned, look, it's okay. Go ahead and call a psychiatrist. Have me committed. Marisol punched me in the shoulder, hard. Ow, I cried. Hey, you're annoying me, she said. Look, if I were worried about you, I'd tell you so. I'm your friend, but I don't think you're going crazy. You think it's normal to have a giant kitty play taking bubble baths in your house? <laughs> Marisol plucked puckered, puckered her lips like she just chewed a lemon. Remember in second grade when that magician came to the school fair? He was lame. He was, he was so lame. Remember how you went behind the stage and figured out how he was making that rabbit appear? And then you told everybody? I grinned, figured it right out. But you took the magic away, Jackson. I liked thinking that little gray bunny appeared in a man's hat. I liked believing it was magic. But it wasn't. He had a hole in the hat, and Marisol covered her ears. I didn't care, she cried, punching me again. And I still don't care. Ow, I said again. I said again. Jackson, Marisol said, just enjoy the magic while you can, okay? I didn't answer. We walked in silence, following our usual route, past the little park with the fountain, past the bike path I've ridden a zillion times, back when I had a bike, past the place where I broke my arm popping a wheelie, past the sign that said, welcome to Swan Lake. And I'm going to stop there and I'm going to ask myself, what did Mary Saul say? Jackson, just enjoy the magic while you can. And Jackson said, it doesn't answer. So I'm going to make an inference here and I'm going to think, what is he thinking about? What could he possibly be thinking about? He's walking in silence. Is he taking to heart what she is saying? And I'm thinking about his feelings. I'm making that inference. Does he feel regret? 
about the bunny incident. Welcome to Swan Lake Village. I read that swans stay together for life, Marisol said. Usually, I said, not always. You and I will be friends for life, Marisol said. She stated it like any nature fact, like she just said, the grass is green. I don't even know where my family's going. Doesn't matter, you can send me postcards. You can email me from the library. You'll find a way. I kicked it at a stone. I'm glad I told you about Crenshaw, I said. Thank you for not laughing. I can practically see him, said Mary Saul. He's doing backflips in my front lawn. Actually, he's doing the splits on your driveway. I said, practically see him. She smiled at me. Fun fact, Jackson, you can't see sound waves, but you can hear music. What did she mean by that? You can't see sound waves, but you can hear music. Oh. All right, so I want you to go ahead and make those inferences as you read. Think about what the characters are feeling and ask yourself, what's Marisol feeling after Jackson tells her about him being leaving? They're leaving and might be going to a next another school. Think about how Marisol felt when um, Jackson ruined the magic because it's been years now and she's still upset. And those are things that make the reading more interesting and make you connect to the author and the text making those inferences. Okay, have a good night, and uh, you'll get the next chapter real soon as well, because I read them both for you right now, because I caught my mistake. So um, maybe I'll send both links out. All right, have a good one, and I'll see you tomorrow.